Someone else have an echo. I've got an echo from somewhere. Okay, okay we should be live. Hi everyone, this is our uh, discussion for The Gilded Ones by Namina Fauna, which is a YA fantasy debut. Um, as far as I can tell, we all enjoyed the book. Um, and we'll start off talking about non-spoilery stuff, and then we'll get into spoilers in about 15 minutes. Um, I don't know who wants to start off the discussion. If anyone's got anything pressing to say. I mean, I think it was clear when we were chatting. We don't remember names very well, except for, I think, Carrie. But <laughs> yeah, Carrie's prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have to forgive us. I mean, I only read it a few weeks ago, but I'm bad at names always. So. In my defense, I read it in February, so I can't be expected to remember things from that far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> this week, so if I was forgetting names, then that would be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also um, don't here in case I need to look anything up. So amazing. <laughs> awesome. Same. <laughs> Your reference copies. <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. Um, I haven't read YA in a while, so it was a really nice, fast read for me. Mm. I thought it was a lot darker for a YA book than I was expecting. I don't know why, because I've read quite a lot of YA fantasy that's quite dark. <laughs> but I've just got it into my head that YA is a lot lighter than yeah. adult stuff. Well, yeah, the covers were really so gorgeous, too. Mm. Yeah. No, I mean, that was the thing I noticed, too. Like, it still, like, had a lot of the trappings of a YA, but, like, it was extremely dark. And I don't think I was expecting military school. I don't know why. I mean, I didn't read Me the back of the book. But, like, I wasn't, like expecting i don't know if we're talking spoilers yet but like what happens in the first couple chapters to our main character like that amount of torture and gore the stuff associated in those first chapters i was like okay yeah. here we are <laughs> yeah i think i was very glad actually that um my copy has a um content warning oh nice on the opening oh. page and um, i mean it's just very vague it says scenes of violence including some graphic violence but that just made me aware when I was going into it that there would be some difficult stuff. I just wasn't quite prepared for that to be like in the first two chapters. Yeah, it was really early on. Normally that kind of stuff is like at the end when the character is really going through it. <laughs> well, I think that's one of my like small complaints of the book is I thought the ending was kind of the opposite of dark. It was almost naive and really easy. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was it was super easy con considering all of the crap that they had they had to go through to get there, mm. and then it just sort of all just sort of went ah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like I can totally forgive that depending on what the sequel does and I I, I think we're still spoiler free but like I have so I I think I, her name's Decca right the main character yeah like mm -hmm. I really liked how she thought and how she interacted with her space I thought she was a pretty thoughtful inquisitive like character like she didn't normally take things at face value because of what we see in the first couple chapters she's like not as trusting and like she's trying to survive like she has to work through her own biases like i really liked all of that but then at the end she felt way too accepting about the new situation and i'm like i mean i'm sitting here as someone who reads a lot of military sci-fi and fantasy i'm like we, we're gonna trust these new people <laughs> like, right <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, like, okay. Yeah. Straight really off the like... bat as well. Carry on. What'd you say, Lana? Uh, I just said okay. straight off the bat. It was like yeah. there was just this easy explanation and she just took it, which she didn't do throughout the entire book. Yeah. So it's a bit like. Mm. And I think, like, while I generally, I really enjoyed the book, I felt that, um, and I like Jekka and her curiosity. Um, but there was just, sometimes I felt it was a little bit too labored. Like she would say, oh, I had all these questions rattling around in my head. And then she'd list all the questions, but she wouldn't just do that once. She did it every single time. Oh, I'm really confused about the situation that I've literally just told you about in the previous chapter. And I'm gonna recap it for you just in case. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what happened in the last chapter where we just had this big situation that I'm confused about? Like, okay, yeah, we we get it. You're confused. We get it. You have <laughs> it's it's fine. I understand. And then just- notice that. I mean, I can definitely see that being annoying once you notice it. I didn't notice that, but also that's what I do all the time. And I think it's very annoying when my anxiety brain does that, where I'm like, oh, let's talk about all the things that I'm concerned about again, even though I talked about that two hours ago to myself and let's do it five times when you're trying to sleep at night. But like reading that in a narrative experience, maybe not yeah, as hard. Yeah. Or even when you said it's like someone else to try to like get it all out. And then like half an hour later, you're like, yep, still worrying about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I suppose it's just maybe I'm, just something I'm noticing, but like it seems at the moment, like all characters in YA have some form of PTSD or anxiety. Like, I mean, she definitely does, and that is a trait of that. But yeah, it, it just it bothered me slightly. It annoyed me a little bit. Yeah, I'm also with Nikki though. I don't know. I mean, I read this pretty quick. I read it in like three or four days. But like, I might have dropped it at that one chapter and then pick it up the next day at the next one, and it was just like a nice recap because I hadn't read those two chapters next to each other. It's very good possibility there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah. Yeah, I think I wondered actually, um, because it's got the author bio at the back, um, the fe- Namina Fauna is her first novel, but she's usually a screenwriter. So I wondered if it's because of that, like that it's a, just a slightly different style of writing that she hasn't maybe. Yeah. Because you so don't I didn't get know that about her actually. Yeah, I didn't either until I until I saw that. Hi Kayla. <laughs> Um, yeah. Finally got it to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was really I- nervous my technology would go bad because it had like a restart last night, like one of those big <laughs> operating systems. Like, oh, this could go poorly. Yeah. But- <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this was. I don't think it was updating. So I'm like, I just please let me log on. <laughs> please just work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Kayla, what do you think of the book? Uh, well, I liked it. Um, let's see, I, I gave it three and a half stars, it looked like. Uh, you know, I think there were some things that weren't perfect for me, but overall, like, I enjoyed it more than I thought I would, because, like, I was a little nervous, um, just, like, seeing a lot more mixed reviews than I had anticipated, so I was like, I don't know how I'm going to like this, but then I, I, I enjoyed it and would definitely read the sequel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Interesting. I really liked how the um, how they situated, well, yeah, how they situated Britta's character and what she meant and became to Decker, especially when it came to her anxiety. I was just like, yes, I know that feeling so well, and it was just written so well. I liked it. I, I love really the friendships that. so yes. much. Yes, I did too. Well, and so I loved sweet. that. I thought the story did really lean into like she had lots of relationships she was forming with her trust and PTSD and like all of that. But like she definitely put in the most effort, like the author, in showing us the like friendships in the military school mm-hmm. and like Britta and Deck. And I'm like, yes, this is where the focus should be. And I know like yeah. people have complaints about the romance and things like that, but it also was on the back burner because that's where it should have been. We should have yeah. been <laughs> focusing on the friendships and all of those things. Yeah. I mean, as she keeps thinking the whole book, like even if she's having this crush, even if she's like trying to trust this guy, every other man she's trusted up to this point is like the worst. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I think the romance was like the, I don't know, more, or I just like, that was like one of the main problems that I had with it. Like I thought it was kind of insta lovey and after kind of like discussing it in a variety of places, you know, like on the group chat and on our discord, like, I think like I had originally said that I would have preferred a different relationship with another person, but now I'm kind of like, I think I just would have preferred no relationships at all. Just like no romance, let's focus on the friendships and you know, that's it. And like, yeah, Yeah. I I think I feel pretty good about that decision. (laughs) Yeah. I felt it was insta lovey, and then I remembered that although the novel is quite fast paced, it actually takes place over about a year. And yeah, then it, was- it took so long just to hold hands. So I was confused when people told me they thought it was insta love. But also, 
She's like the age that I was when I first had a crush on someone. And I did that in three days. I fell in love with them. <laughs> like, I think we just forget as we get older that our yeah. emotional capacity to be patient as teenagers is not. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, I think that's there's true. a moment where he says, oh, the moment I saw you in that room, I knew there was something special about you or something like that. I can't remember exactly what he says, but that kind of is, there's kind of insta love on his side, maybe. But then you get this like build up of the relationship through the whole book. And as you say, it was just, it was on the side and it was just, it was obvious that it was gonna Did happen. Did they even kiss? I can't remember. I remember they held hands and I remember they hugged a lot. Like that was most of the book is that they hugged and held hands and sat under trees. Yeah, huh? I mean, oh, this okay. is starting to drift into spoilery territory, but yes, towards the end, they do have their first kiss. And it, was, it was quite sweet. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I liked it because that represented to me, like I was relating hardcore to that love story because I was like, this is very similar. I was having fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like that it, it wasn't the main focus. Yeah, I could go either way on it, but I thought it was sweet, and I like that it was more focused on her friendships for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nikki, I really like your avatar a lot. It's so like <laughs> warm. <laughs> it's so. And Nikki. I just noticed so many little lemons in the background. Oh, I just, I really I like it. <laughs> Well, is there any other like spoiler-free thoughts people want to throw out into the ether? I love the animal companion. I, yes. I was not yes. expecting that. Yes, and that was probably one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And it was yeah. so cute. Lena's not an animal companion person, so I was just Gosh. like, I wonder yeah. what she's going to say this? about this. <laughs> I think she actually liked it when I remember watching her review. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's I mean, kind of a really cool animal companion. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> now, my only issue with the animal companion, and it's a small issue, is I wanted more animal companion. Mm. Like in every really way, hoping. you could have more animal companion. That's mm -hmm. what I wanted. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm hoping for more in book two. Like, yeah, I, I want. I want to see the animal companion more, but like. I didn't know Lena had things against animal companions, which how that ha that that's, that's <laughs> what? wrong. I was that like, she just doesn't like them because she doesn't want them to die or something like that. Yeah, she I guess. Normally I mean, she's been scarred by very thick. <laughs> <laughs> well, just don't read Robin Hobb. I don't even know if she does bad things to all the animal companions, but she does bad things to everyone. So, like, I would presume just don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> she also doesn't like makeover scenes, though. So. <laughs> Well, she also defines some things as makeover scenes that are not. <laughs> like she put on mascara. <laughs> and poor Lena. She took a shower after being covered in blood. <laughs> makeover scene. Uh, yes. No, Animal Companions, I didn't really think about it till this year, but it's like one of my top tropes mm -hmm. next to inanimate talking object that I carry around with me. Like... <laughs> Yeah. They are equal level. <laughs> I love that to the boundary side. And now I'm like, I need more inanimate. Yes. 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 This is another reason why you guys should read Nine Fox Gambit, because if there's kind of sort of that type of idea of like the mental bond thing with something, it's very good. Yeah, I thought um the balance, like some of the tropes I thought were done really well, like the found family, the animal companion, mm -hmm. um, the slow burn romance but i did feel the the chosen one trait was a little bit too in your face at times but that's just me it's not my favorite trait so i was just like you're really laboring the point here that there's something special about this girl <laughs> <laughs> maybe because i read this Unnatural. after a wheel of time book it felt lesser because wheel of time is really bad. oh my god yeah because <laughs> <laughs> i can see that but like <laughs> it's also not my least favorite you know it's just like a trope that's in like every Disney movie, right? Like, I don't even know if Disney could not use that trope. Yeah, and, like back to the animal companion thing as well. Like this did have quite a lot of Disney vibes to me in that sense. Like, I mean, apart from the violence, obviously. Yeah, I was gonna say like, <laughs> <laughs> I went all in there at the beginning, especially. 
It's a little gory. They'd have to take out some of the gore unless they made an adult animated movie line, which please, but they won't. But <laughs> <laughs> like, kind of, yeah, kind of like the original Mulan, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like I had a thought that was non-spoiler, but I'm sure it'll come up in the spoiler section anyways. Okay. Well, we're 15 minutes in, so we can start talking about spoilers now. Okay. So, I kind of liked that this was, like, a darker YA sort of book, especially, like, I mean, the, the beginning, especially, with the torture, I was just like, whoa, all right, here, like, we're going all in here, so I, like, I yeah. was... I mean, that's, that's a weird thing to say that I enjoyed it, but I did. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. It's definitely gripping. It, yes. it hooks you right in. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I really expected the whole, what's her name, White Hands to show up quicker than she did. And I'm like, how many months have your bo has your body just been, like, por torn apart and just mm -hmm. bleeding and, like, whew, it was mm, I can't remember how many times that she said she died and came back no um, but I I yeah i remember it being it a lot, lot. Like, you've been through all of this yeah well and she like extra can't die because of the chosen yes. oneness of her yeah i love that i'm using that yeah. chosen oneness I love it's it. her chosen plot oneness. armor it exists we <laughs> move on <laughs> But it also makes it um, so rough, right? Because I think there comes a point, and I can't remember specifically, where she would have rather stayed dead during all of this, and she can't. And that's almost yeah. worse. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. And Something her friend, um, Decca's friend, I cannot remember her name. Um, the one that was in the brothel, and there oh, was that one scene uh, where she was talking that? about, like, she always heals. That mm -hmm. was so funny. Oh, yeah. oh man, that was... I was just like, oh. And I mama. never even thought about that until that scene came up, and it was mm. like, mm -mm. yeah, because they mentioned that she went through like a lot of hard stuff, and then when she went into detail, I was just like, oh, your whole character makes so much sense. Yeah, I liked her arc. I really liked her arc. There was a scene actually linked to that that I thought was really good, which was when they were all talking about whether they were virgins or not. And um, just yeah. to have such a, a sex positive conversation that was also positive about people choosing not to have sex, mm -hmm. um, which I thought yeah. was really great for YA because I think often it goes to one extreme or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have it have a really balanced conversation amongst all these characters, um, and then the way that Deck could like diverts it so that Valkalis doesn't have to answer. I was just like, oh my heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. No, I yeah. really love that scene. Something else that I liked, but I didn't ex oh yeah. That I didn't I that I thought it would bother me more is I thought it was kinda obvious at some point the death streaks or whatever they're called. It's like, oh, you guys are those. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how I know you're either are like it was very sci fi, right? Like maybe it's not a <laughs> fantasy thing that I was picking up, but it was very like, okay. Definitely military stuff. They're not telling you the truth. So you're probably fighting against yourself, like, you know. But honestly, I love that. And so I like really liked that it leaned into that and like how she was learning. Cause she was also catching on to it at the same time I was, which is why I really like Decca. Cause I'm like, okay, you're not being dumb and missing yes. all of these clues. <laughs> yeah. Like you crazy. don't have the fantasy sci-fi books I've read to help you mm -hmm. out. So I can forgive you not knowing quite what's happening, <laughs> but you know, something's up and I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was handled really well because like it, it got to the point where it was fairly obvious before she realized it but like i don't find that annoying most of the time in in books if the author's done the groundwork then the twist isn't necessarily a surprise because they've done the groundwork and i thought that worked really well in this book that like it could have been a real surprise if you missed the clues but actually she she'd done she'd laid the foundation for that to be the the twist at the end and i thought it was really cleverly done Mm -hmm. Although the twist after the twist with the whole like goddesses thing, like I don't know if any of you guys have read The Power, where it's like you know the world where all the women get the electrical oh, yeah. and read that. Back stuff, and then all of a sudden women rule the world. But obviously, it's it's not a very nuanced book in its theming, in my opinion. <laughs> but I feel like here, you know, we had a world where the men took over from the women, and that led to 
badness and oppressing of women who were different and powerful because that's what happens. And now we're just going to fall into the reverse of that, and it's still going to be bad, but no one's had that thought on page. I'm just like, you know, it's like the <laughs> obvious thing. I don't know. It just felt like the book yeah. was doing really well at being nuanced and yeah, good, I, I, and the ending was just, like, the mm. ending felt like more generic fantasy ending. Like, I don't even want to say why, it just felt like a generic fantasy ending. And mm. everything up to that point was using tropes that I love, but it was doing it in a really strong way. And I just, I think I was disappointed that the ending just wasn't as strong as all the book up to that point. Yeah, mm. I agree. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. I actually liked the ending and like, I can't remember exactly why. Um, like, yeah, I mean, it's definitely kind of predictable tropiness, but I feel like maybe it's just like, I, I'm so excited to see what happens next. And like, I, I really hope it doesn't fall into like the same sort of tropes of, of things that we've seen before, but like, maybe she'll have something to surprise us in the next one. I don't know. No, I mean, I'm excited for the sequel because it is one of those things where like the sequel will really determine how I'll feel about the ending overall one day. But I did just really feel like the ending happened like really fast. Like the whole book's pretty fast for me, but it was like the ending just like, I could barely keep up with what was happening. And I was was just so like, why is this King guy suddenly here? Like, how did he know to come here and be ready for this boss battle? Like, it felt like suddenly I was like in a video I game. I thought I missed something. <laughs> yeah. I was reading like previous, prior to that, I was reading at nighttime. And I was like, was I just really tired? <laughs> and I missed like all of this build up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was listening to the audiobook and I had to rewind it. I was like, I must have missed. Something. I do remember that. That is true. It yeah, it did feel a bit convenient that yeah that he was suddenly there, and then the, that some of the men have secret powers as well. And yeah. like, I was waiting for that to happen. Though. That's like the girls versus boys boarding school thing. <laughs> <laughs> That was like an interesting twist, but it was it didn't hit me as cool as like the other twist because that one I wasn't thinking about actively. So for me, I was like, oh, this makes sense. This I, I can see why this happened, but like I'm so confused as to how everyone is here, like how the pieces fell into this like domino cascade. I was just like, I don't understand. And then up to this point, me and Deco were like on the same wavelength. And she didn't question it nearly as much as I was, but she's also in like the heat of chaos. So maybe, yeah. you know, should give her a break. I'm safe on a couch. She's mm -hmm. not, so. <laughs> For me, it was like when the king was there, I was like, um, okay, so he's known all along that this is his great, great grandmother. But when they were together in his actual palace, the way that they spoke to each other and like conversed, I thought it was, weird like if they both knew who each other was i felt yeah. like they would have just interacted differently yeah i agree with that like um yeah. thinking back to like ray bearer where um anytime the 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 evil mother is in like anywhere near the emperor then it's all like very tense and like if he really knew that his she was his great great grandmother or however many greats and that she was actively plotting against him why is he treating her so civilly and letting her build an army like it yeah. just didn't quite entirely make sense to me mm. yeah I, yeah he just I, I wish a little bit more thought went into our antagonistic force I think that's just where it's at like I'm also picky like if you give me like a person is the antagonist like I don't love many of those like at all like even from Sanderson who like is one of my favorite authors like I don't usually like his like big bad characters um, just because they don't normally seem to be as fleshed out as like the other characters and I like don't understand like I don't even need to understand his motivation his motivation is he wants power that's fine I, I don't understand what he's doing because like you said like why did he let them make this army like he seems like he's being dumb but I don't know if he's being dumb because I don't know anything about him yeah. and and like you said it just he shows up like a boss battle and I'm just like okay <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if like any of it had been rewritten because it was pushed back because of the pandemic I think and I was wondering if that was part of the what contributed to this sort of tonal shift of it because in the beginning it was like really dark and then it sort of like eased up a little bit towards the end um so I was wondering if any of it had been like reworked maybe and he was meant to sort of 
do his big reveal earlier or there were supposed to be more hints towards it. Mm, but I haven't maybe. actually read any interviews with the author, so I'm gonna have to do that. I did hear yesterday from someone that she originally wanted this story in the adult space. So I can definitely see how she like rewrote some okay. things for the young adult space, like, and things like that. But I do know that like when she was originally presenting, I think the story as a pitch to um, publisher, she wanted this in the adult space. And you can definitely mm -hmm. feel that she wanted the darker yeah. hues to it. But, but I mean, I do think the final product makes sense to be marketed as young adult. It definitely fits into what is yeah. currently published in that space. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Do we know when the next one comes out? It's called Deathless. That's the series name, which is quite yeah. interesting. The next one's called The Merciless Ones. And that also says 2021, but it might be next year. next year. I would like that because something I've learned about myself is I don't like waiting too long between books and like a young adult fantasy series because I like forget things, but I don't necessarily want to reread it. Ooh. Mine says 2022. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. It's probably been pushed back from when this one was pushed back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Why can't they pull a mask of mirrors and give me two books in one year? Yeah. <laughs> There's also a sci-fi coming out soon called The Last Watch, and that's coming out in April, May, and then the sequel's coming out in August, which I'm really excited about. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I wish more books would do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I was, I won a book in a giveaway, which was the first in the series, but they were all published one, like, month by month, and I haven't read it yet, and it was just like, that would, would have been a great opportunity to get a whole series out of the way, and I still haven't even got around to reading the first one. Was that um, A Queen in Hiding? Yes, yeah. Yeah, I, okay, I heard about that one last really year. excited about it, but I didn't read it. The first one, it was okay, like, it... It was weird because like the synopsis kind of promised something and the book just felt like a prequel to that story that the synopsis yeah. promised and so I was just kind of like eh. <laughs> I don't know I, I never continued after the first one okay. also um, I was looking back I, I just googled the merciless ones um but yes I had forgotten about the adaptation that they are going to do wow. yes I see something Ooh. that'll be a movie Oh. I think they announced that back I mean, it would work well for a movie, I think, pacing Yeah. Out. Yeah. Especially how the book already kind of has its own internal montage scenes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I, I like, like montage scenes. I'm not knocking it. It's just it has them. <laughs> yeah. I think that's the screenwriter coming out in her. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I did think that a couple of times when I was reading it, and it was like there was, where there were the sudden jumps in time. Like you needed like a training montage to, to yeah, and some little. dramatic music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still also do we. What's the name of the animal companion again? That looks like a cat or a dragon. Or I think whatever. it's Ixa. Is that right? Ixa, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I just I loved her so much. I wanted her to learn how to say more than Decca, but. <laughs> yeah. She was so cute, though, and I was oh, so like when that last scene with her when the emperor like got her with the celestial bronze and she was just crying. Yeah, like save the baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. I was also like really stressed with Decca when um I don't remember her partner's name, the love story dude, um but like when he had to like <laughs> pretend to hate her and kill her to then take her away and mm. save her because i i honestly didn't know in that moment based off all the knowledge like is he doing a fake out or is this another betrayal like i didn't know and i was very stressed so i thought that was done well that i really like because we're not in his head a lot and we only sort of see him he does seem kind of like a goody goody like i don't really know he seems like someone who could tow the like party line i don't know but i really liked yeah. how that played out Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I remember what they do. I think that's more important. Yes. <laughs> I think I think his name is Kida or Kaida. Uh, I think it does start with a K. A. Yeah. K E I T A. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds familiar. So how yes. do you say well, that? And I think a lot of them have K's in the name, so I keep getting them <laughs> mixed up. At the I'm start, a I got like book right now that replaced all the eyes with Y's for no real discernible reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought that that scene 
was so and particularly the after the bit afterwards where she comes to and she like realizes that he's he saved her like and then she realizes how her her dying that time wasn't just horrible for her how horrible it was for him as well and I was like, oh, my heart <laughs> yeah yeah that was really sweet yeah I loved that and I should have seen it more clearly, but when White Hands was like, I'm a death streak of old, I was like, oh, this is cool. Like, <laughs> let's explore this. I want knowledge, mainly because my whole I love info dump brain was like, okay, so now dump info. Yeah, right. yeah. I wonder if we'll give it. <laughs> like, tell me your history. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like, I, I do the thing that most people will be annoyed at, but I want, which is <laughs> all the information. I would yeah. be happy if she got like her own novella. Mm, that would be cool. I would be very would happy be with really that. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, I think my favorite my favorite scene of that book is when is it she something oh when she starts freaking out and she calls for Britta. Like Britta is her lifeline. That uh, that is the scene that stuck with me the most out of the whole entire book. That is mm. That's the one for me. I shipped them and I am so sad. Yes, that was, that was the relationship I was rooting for too. Yeah. <laughs> I would be happy with that for sure. They have so much chemistry. Yeah. I kind of did, but then also knowing like about where the author's from, I thought it was very unlikely that that was going to happen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Where's oh, yeah. the author from? Sierra and Leone. From Sierra Leone. So it's very... Um, got a very strong like christian basis but mm. particularly the anti lgbt stuff wasn't mm -hmm. there like minor lgbtq rep here though i thought for some reason so. there, there was like references of people liking the same gender but i'm unsure yeah. yes yeah yeah so she she was born in sierra leone and then they moved to america when she was um not yet yeah, a teenager so i think but i think maybe having like side characters is probably more comfortable than having main characters. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was one of the twins. One of the twins and yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think she says like at the start, she says it's not unheard of for that mm. for yeah. like same sex couples, it's just sort of frowned upon. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but I think they also were all like well, we're frowned upon for existing, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> their actual just breathing upsets a whole bunch of people. So yeah. true. And uh, like on a tangent, um, I was wondering about the period, how they wouldn't know. This bothered me for a while, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like at first I was like, so you bleed gold, but maybe you bleed red like mm -hmm. and then it kind of i don't remember when it kind of answered it what was it, it the girl to found out? that if you're of this species you really don't menstruate until you're 15 or 16 that it had a more hard start year than your average human but then mm -hmm. there was like a character who like started menstruating at like 12 or 13 but like just happened to be in like a safe environment so it was her mom right and um, I, I don't remember the specifics so. but it, it seemed like it was known that this was like kind of a flaw in the system, but most of the time it worked out. <laughs> so, um, Belcalis was the one that found out much much younger, and that's how she ended up in the brothel, wasn't it? I think I'm trying to remember. And Britta also, uh, I think so. Britta was kept safe by her family because she bled gold earlier, and they they kept it hidden. But I'm not. I can't remember. One of them, it was they cut themselves and the other one it was their period and I can't remember which way round it was. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling it was yeah. that one. it was the period because of them what happened afterwards. I should remember because I only read it this week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did like that it was it was kind of fixed enough for me because it did seem like just as we went on, the whole idea that actually like I think at first we're kind of in Decca's head and it's like, okay, everything always happens perfectly and no one, you know, ever gets hurt and everyone gets to make it to their fifteenth or whatever and be judged, and it's just obvious that that's actually not what happens. Mm -hmm. And so then I accepted it because, you know, once we, you know, realize, well, actually this is kind of like whatever happens, like the minute someone notices you have gold blood, you're kind of screwed, mm -hmm. sort of thing. 
Yeah. yeah. But it did bother me for a bit. I, I, just think I remember you <laughs> being annoyed at that. Because, yeah. like, there was a whole chapter, like, pages about all of the nitty gritty things and not m one mention of menstruation. And I'm like, this author is a woman. This is yeah. obviously a thing that happens to teenage girls. Mm. Like, it was that. No, the no, and it would be kind of cool to bleed gold, too. Something different. Yeah. Well, and like, I mean, the way she could have also done it is like, yes, menstruation is blood, but it's not quite the same blood as like in your veins blood. It's a little different. So you could like, she could have hand waved it like that biologically, but like, <laughs> <laughs> also what I thought was weird is how much they hated these women, but like they would totally just like put them on an IV drip and just take out all their blood to like sell. Like this was actually like something that could be sold and made really cool armor. Like this was very versatile, like plasma. Like, yeah. Yeah, I while I was reading that, I was like, really cool. The what? The armor mm -hmm. that they made from the from her blood. That was really cool. Yeah. Well, and like how her own blood would help her teammates not hear her like siren call. I don't really know what to call her power, mm -hmm. but yeah. That was cool. Yeah. And what very cool. That, that one girl refused to wear the thing and that made oh, yeah. to control her and save Britta's life. How convenient. Oh, <laughs> I mean, I was, it did was fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I was really concerned when Britta died and was forced to come back to life because traditionally in other stories, if you force someone to not die, they aren't always right. And I was really yeah. concerned that Britta would like be back, but like the wouldn't be Britta, Britta anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was that was actually what I was going to ask about, like what you guys thought of that. I like was a little conflicted with just like, oh, okay, well, I've commanded you to not die, and that magically works. So I was like, uh, don't love that, but also I didn't want her to die, so I was okay <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I kind of would have. I mean, this is, I think, this is the part where we're really starting to get into the end of the book, and more of my <laughs> issues do pop up, and like I would have been very hurt but very impressed if that mm -hmm. death had stuck like i think that would have actually made the ending stronger for me or yeah. if it did have more of a consequence of okay you get to have britta back but mm -hmm. here's the consequence for it i think that would have helped me a bit more it's assuming nothing else changed but <laughs> yeah i think in my a i just expect people not to fully die yeah, yeah. I mean, I expect that in adult as well. Like the last time, I mean, when it's so rare that one of the books I read that actually had a character death of a main character, I was like, oh, very brave. Like it just doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like that was really close to the point where we had the reveal that they don't actually die, they become death streaks. So Britta would have mm. not actually True. Been, been a, a death streak because then that the other cat, uh, Katia, the earlier friend um was the one that revealed the truth to her mm -hmm. uh, because she had the red spikes and that was how they recognized yeah. <laughs> it was in her eyes can't you tell <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no for me britta died because like i was like okay i'll go along with this and like i'm fine with this is because she hadn't actually died yet mm -hmm. like you could see the the blue, well, that's how I read it. You could see, like, the blue stuff coming, like, so it was her final death, but, like, she was like, no, and stopped it. So I was like, okay, she's not dead yet, so I'll I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I think I was cool with it when it was happening, but then the ending just kept doing things. I was just like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, that was the first moment where I was like, okay, I slightly, this is the first time I'm actively disagreeing with your uh, idea author. Like, up to that point, I'd been pretty much on board. I was like, everything's good. Your your vision for your story, I'm I'm cool. And then that happened and I'm like, ah. But there's still potential in the sequel. Like I don't think they've gotten to like chat a lot or do a lot of reconnecting since the restructuring of this country. <laughs> so like we don't actually know if there are actual any consequences or anything it's like true. that. But yeah. Yeah, I I I am intrigued to see what happens in the next book i suppose like in some ways there were very similar plot lines to um to ray bearer with this big reveal at the end about this hidden branch from the the, the female ancestry and 
like that that had been suppressed. Um, so I'm interested to see how that plays out in the next book. I really want to see them going back, like her going back to her village. I want mm -hmm. to see when that happens. I hope that we get that. Um, I want her to destroy everyone there. <laughs> I don't, yes. I don't think I could handle that scene at all. Like, I can't handle her seeing her dad. I can't do yeah. it. Yeah. Like, specifically the dad. Like, I cannot. <laughs> oh, yeah. that'd be harsh. The, the other yeah. boy. Like, I really thought the, the other boy from the beginning, um, Jonas or whatever his name was, that he was the gonna, one who flirted at the bakery. Yeah, whoever he was. He was going to come back at some point during the story. Mm -hmm. didn't. Because um, I thought that would have been a really interesting thing if he, like, had been drafted into the. villagers. <laughs> 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 if he'd been drafted into the army or something, that could have been an. Interesting thing. But um, yeah, uh, so I'm interested to see it, if and when what happens when she goes back to to her village. Mm. I definitely think Ionis and stuff will will be in it again because they're mentioned throughout the. Things. So I'm hoping that so. they'll yeah. come back. But yeah, I was confused though. Maybe it, I just read through it too fast because I was like, I need to finish this by the eleventh. <laughs> but, <laughs> but like, did her dad know that she wasn't his? Because like, her mum could mm. do the trickery thing. The, the show, it, the way it was done, it was very thing. like. She didn't really have parents, but the way the egg formed, she was supposed to look like her parents. Yeah. So like, she was supposed to look like a kid that would have been from her mom and dad if that kid had existed. Yeah, but did he I not? I assumed that he knew, and I thought it was really sweet, um, but I don't actually. I don't think he knew. I thought that he thought this was her daughter and he, she was a normal girl. And then, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't yeah. think he knew anything really like, about his life past. I thought he was a yeah. very naive man who was tricked by white hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got yeah. played. <laughs> well, because if he did know, I would have expected him to, like, I don't know, love his daughter no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah the, the fact that he's so keen on trying to get her dead at the beginning implies that he had no idea she was anything other than his normal child. Yeah. Um, to me, if, he, if he'd have known that she wasn't his and there was something weird about her um about her birth or about her mother he wouldn't have been surprised that she was impure and mm -hmm. wouldn't have been trying so hard to get her dad in my in my yeah, yeah. yeah that sense. was mine as well yeah that hurt though when he just straight up there wasn't any hesitation yeah he just straight up killed her i was just like i wasn't expecting this, it i thought it could be a really nice relationship at the beginning <laughs> I was, like, oh, relationship. Yeah, I was like, oh, he sounds like my dad. That's so sweet. And then that happened and I was just like, Never nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it felt like, so, I mean, I don't have experience with this, but, like, it felt like, you know, a parent who, like, claims to always love their kid as long as that kid's normal, but say you're in an extremely conservative family and then they come mm -hmm. out as gay or trans or something. And then it's, I don't know how, if it's normally, like, on a switch like that, I would have expected a little bit more denial like yeah. this can't actually be happening, sort of thing. But she did also see her like command a death streak, so maybe that was it. And he's like, "Whoa!" This is but, what I mean. This is why I thought he knew. <laughs> yeah, no, because like his wife, I think, bled red. Like it was really weird. Whatever was happening with her, like she wasn't quite a death streak. Right. Okay. Like, and maybe maybe he wasn't there for the birth either. Because they did something about she she tricked them. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, because he, like even Decca's like, but I've seen her bleed red, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, I, so there was some trickery. Either she was a death streak, and there's illusionary magic of some sort that we don't understand, or she was like only partial death streak and could like. Okay, hang by. on though. Can we can we comment on these cats running behind Lana? <laughs> They're great. I'm like really I'm enjoying it. <laughs> oh they have the zoomies hard. <laughs> they do. I'm so excited because usually we're asleep and. Because this is at Zoomy hours. Yes. <laughs> They're like, the lights are still on, people are awake. Let's go. They're getting their, for, they're getting their camera time in. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. That's crazy. Dude, oh, I just I saw that little face peeking around. I'm like, I gotta say something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway. You know what I did kind of think about once we did have some of the reveals, and I'm not upset with the story we got, but man, how cool would the story have been is she did get captured. And like right from the start, she's in the hands of the Death Shrieks. And like mm -hmm. you start the story knowing all of that. And then, you know, you're going through the rebellion, like, from that angle. Like, I think that could have been a really cool story, too. But, like, I love stories where people get, like, kidnapped and then realize their situation is better than they thought. <laughs> like, that's, like, a, it's a bad trope to, like, I blame Beauty and the Beast. But it's, like, yeah. a story, like, <laughs> like. <laughs> I do like that trope, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, did anyone listen to the audiobook? Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. There were a lot of accents. Oh, and I knew, what? yeah, I would imagine. I I don't know how I feel about it, and I know I'm the one in Seven Devils that was like, "Why did she only talk like this part of the time?" But there was like, <laughs> like an African type accent, and then like a Scottish or Irish accent, and then like a, a southern accent. It was very Wait, odd. A southern. Yeah, Who somebody sounded. I don't remember who it was, but they sounded like they had that southern twang, weird. and that's when it hit me. I was like, "This is weird." <laughs> it kind of makes sense to me, though, you saying that because it felt like such a global world as we were traveling with mm -hmm. Decca. So, like, I could see that being jarring in audio space, but like, I thought it was weird when we did have like Britta and Decca. Like, I think Britta is white, and like Decca was living in more northern regions where people were generally more white. But I was like, she definitely doesn't sound like North African or anything like that in my head. Yeah, mm. yeah Chris's dialect in the book was quite jarring for me. <laughs> yeah. What was her dialect based off of? Because as I've talked about Seven Devils, I know it's a dialect, but I don't know whose dialect. I feel like it was like Scottish was how I interpreted it. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it was some form of British weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so funny because I'm from the South, and I was cool with the dialects until the Southern accent came in, and then I was yeah. like, no, that's unbelievable. No. Oh, man. So fake. Yeah, like, it was fantasy, so fantasy doesn't happen here. Stop it. <laughs> oh, man, I love when fantasy happens in the South. I've been reading a lot of um, Black authors who have been, like, putting their work there. Like, Jemison has a lot of short stories in, like, the South, and I, I, I like it. But <laughs> I guess I haven't really come across it except for like True Blood, but the author is from Arkansas. So, yeah, I feel like that's something. I mean, I'm totally fine with it happening in urban fantasy because that makes sense, but like yeah. high fantasy is a little bit more odd, especially. I don't know. Yeah, and maybe like, it's just because it doesn't happen that much. It's yeah. mainly like European or yeah. like over the pond kind of. <laughs> Yeah. but it was very odd to me. I mean, yeah, it's definitely def definitely not the standard, but I guess then we have to just make a rule for ourselves of either no dialects or all dialects are welcome, because otherwise we're just yeah. using implicit biases for no reason. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean, rules? it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the story, but it was very jarring to hear it on audio. I, yeah, I don't remember, like, thinking while reading it that anything sounded southern so that like that's an interesting choice because i don't remember any like y'alls or anything like that coming up in this yeah huh. and it was i wonder how closely the author maybe got to work with that narrator and being mm -hmm. like yeah these people are from this region because my guess not sure if i'm right might have been it was the twins who were really far away from everyone else like no one uh, knew where they were from <laughs> I think it was. Mm, so that okay. you telling okay. me that that would have been my guess based off the world building because they like came from so far away that the women when they do bleed gold are never killed or anything. They True. Just, like get to live. I just remembered what Britta Axe's accent reminded me of. It's a pirate accent. <laughs> <laughs> like a pirate. That's funny. <laughs> I love that. that. Really because that when a British person is writing a pirate character, that's the kind of way a pirate character. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> so I think that's probably why it's on the up so much. Oh my god. I didn't mind this as much as the one in Seven Devils, though. The one in Seven Devils just got on my nerves. I think it's because yeah. it was so inconsistent. Mm, that's why it got on my nerves. Yeah. This one, it was just more noticeable, but it wasn't irritating. Mm. I just, the only time, so I'm like, I don't. I, these sounds don't make it into my brain, so it doesn't like do a lot. Like I just read the words, yeah. but like 
my issues with dialects is only when I don't know what the word is. Like you've spelled it in a way that I cannot easily infer mm -hmm. the word anymore. Like I, like that's when it's hard. Um, it can be really hard for me to read some dialects where the syntax has changed enough that I have to almost for a minute learn a new language structure because yeah. there are certain like pronouns that actually mean different words. Like I have to find the equivalencies to make the sentences equate what they normally would. But <laughs> like, I can't stand Huckleberry Finn dialect. That book <laughs> drives me up the wall. I can't handle it. I've never read that. Again, <laughs> the South. Yeah, it is the <laughs> South. It's, but it's like this. It's like a was Mark Twain it's from like the South. The like I don't even know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just dislike it. I dislike yeah. Huckleberry Finn because no, it's I, just like a boy traveling, and it's like a boys being boys story. It's like the definition. Yes. And yes. I hate those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. West Country Pirate is something Nikki has said, and I don't know what that means. Yes, Nikki, very much like <laughs> on the pirate. <laughs> I'll find you some videos from of people from the West Country. <laughs> like you're talking in the UK, like this very like long thing has a West Country. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> now is the West Country. Okay. Yeah, I'll point it out on a map later for you. <laughs> sea shanties. Those are all the rage right now. That's right. Yeah. Thanks, TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> it's helping people stay calm. I'll allow it. Yeah, I'm here for a good sea shanty. <laughs> at, least, at least it's wholesome. Yeah. And then everybody loves it. Yeah, even so, my kids are like, Mom, put on the sea shanty. I'm like, <laughs> So kind like of related to like season. a past YA book we talked about, and we're talking about how we want to read the sequel for this one, most of us, I think. Illusionary's coming out soon, and that you know is the sequel to Incendiary, and like I'm really excited. And I don't know if anyone else is still excited to read it, because you know it's I been mean, like a yeah. minute. I think like every that's... Well, so you can read oh, it yeah. on YouTube. That is useful. Yeah, I feel like I think after we had finished Incendiary, I was kind of like, nah, I don't know if I want to continue. But now I feel like as we're slowly approaching the release date, I'm like, okay, yeah, I am actually interested in seeing how that... That's good. Normally for yeah, me, it's yeah. the opposite. I'm really excited yeah. to begin with, and then it just, my excitement just sort of decreases. Mm -hmm. well, I, I, think I remember enough of my emotional points that I think mm -hmm. I'm still like connected to the characters. Or like, I never had a strong connection to Ren anyways. I cared more about other characters that I think are about to get more page time. So I'm very mm -hmm. excited. <laughs> I had a lot of questions at the end of um, Incendiary that I am really excited to have hopefully answered in the next book. So um, I'm excited to read it too. Also, Stephanie, once you finish A Desolation Called Peace, everyone who was on the Memory Called Empire chat has read it. <laughs> and we could Thank chat you for about calling it. me out. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, I do plan on reading it. I'm really excited. I just got to gush about it last night with a friend. Oh, oh! <laughs> You're, You're better through than I am, Kerry. <laughs> I'm still like 100 pages. <laughs> yeah, I struggled with that book for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty like it's not your like. It's not a fast-paced book, so if yeah. you like don't like have the mental capacity for the slow denseness of it, even though like, okay, I say it's not a fast-paced book, but it takes place over the course of a week. So like, I don't, you know, it's like, <laughs> things happen very fast. Slow. I'm just finding it boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just finding it too intense when I was trying to write massive essays. Yeah, um, yeah and, I can imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Also, like, Nikki's wrong all the pressure, Stephanie. You need to read all the things. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so behind on everything. <laughs> I'm listening to the audiobook of A Memory Called Empire, and it is really, really good. Like, I started Isn't reading it? it, and it was, like, dense. But then when I started, I was, like, doing the dishes one day, and I was like, I'm going to get that on audio. So I got the audio, and it's so good. Maybe I should try that, then. I might prefer it, because Justine yeah. read it as an audio book as well, and she really liked it. Yeah, the narrators are really good. Or the narrator, excuse me. Yeah. Really good. <laughs> okay. And then I but Nikki's on my team. Ones was really good. So definitely all the pressure. Thank you. <laughs> I just want you to read it before the end of 2021. That's really actually my time frame for you, so I hope that's reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm enjoying this now that I probably will try and buy the, the sequel very soon 
when my budget allows me to, which <laughs> with the orders I've got coming, probably won't be for two months. It's one of I those things how that... I'm over budget, are you? Um, at the end of March, I had minus £8.88 in my budget. <laughs> and I wasn't going to buy anything in April because I've got at least two pre-orders coming in May. But then, because um, I, I heard the news about um, K.A. Reynolds' husband at the weekend, um, and I've been meaning to buy one of her books for a while anyway, so I thought, well, now's a good time to support this author who's just lost her husband, so I did buy one of her books. So I'm going to be on about minus £13. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really done anything this month yet. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> well, well any other Gilded before... One thoughts before we wrap this up as we went on? I mean, I pa know. past book club tangents, which I feel are fun. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Oh, what I was your thoughts? overall star rating? Three and a Half. Yeah, yeah, I did. Three point five. <laughs> I really want to do that. No, it's three and a This is three, three and a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that. Three point seven five for me. If the ending was stronger, it would have been a four and a half, which is why I was disappointed. Because mm. YAs for me don't normally make the four and a half five yeah. star range, and it was so yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah, I think for me, it just because of what I was saying about like the, the repetitiveness of some of the language, um, like um, it took me a little while to get into it. And that was more like, by the time I got to the, the end being really fast paced, I was a lot more into it, but yeah. So it was about three and a half that I rounded up because I'm generous. You are. <laughs> <laughs> I round, I mean, I round where it seems appropriate on Goodreads and I keep my half stars on Storygraph and it makes me happy. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Yeah, same. Well, That's next good. month we're reading The Bone Shard Daughter. Yay, I'm excited yeah. for that. I'm really excited. I don't have my copy yet. I've been waiting for it to go down in price because it just came out in paperback in the UK. So yes. I'm like, I'm watching it every single day. Wait. <laughs> I'm just seeing it on a Kindle deal. Now that I have a new Kindle, I want to read everything on ebook. Yes, I'm very excited. <laughs> it's actually um, in the U.S. because it is, it did also just come out in paperback. It's one of Barnes and Noble's like April books of the month, and it is included in a buy one get one half off thing with some of their other stuff. Oh, so I guess if anyone's in the U.S. and wants to pick it up, <laughs> it could be a good option. I was I got a, um, an ER copy on NetGalley, and I was really surprised. So wow! Just, oh. Yeah, nice. That's awesome. The audio, the audio book for it is really good. Nice. Ooh, no, I'm really excited. Really like between all of you guys and then other people, I, I feel like it's going to be my type of fantasy. So I'm really hoping. I'm trying also I'm not, not to go into it with too high of expectations yeah, because then I then I always crash. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I've I've heard everybody has like really positive reviews of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've heard some people say it still is not perfect, but like mm -hmm. the thing, the pros outweigh the cons for them, even when they see the cons. So like, I'm also going into it knowing that like, maybe there are going to be some things that I don't love like as much, but mm -hmm. maybe the things I love so much, well, it won't matter. Yeah. That... Yeah. Yeah. Does that and have animal I... companions or am I making that up? Nope, it has it. That's what people yes. told me. If we lie, <laughs> they're all going to die. <laughs> Two in a row. The next live stream is just going to be Angela, just really. Where angry. would the animal companion <laughs> <laughs> with her cat surrounding her? <laughs> I, listen, animal companions are the greatest. Like, it's true. Are. We it's all true. don't want to be alone, and even if we don't want to be with a person, we want to be with something, right? Inanimate object, animal, something. <laughs> okay, someone says Mephi, so I think that's the animal companion. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I'm ready. That's probably oh, what it is. <laughs> How okay? And this is a slight tangent, but I'm really sad that the Davabod trilogy introduced an animal companion way too late. That should have been yes. done. Yes. Should have been done earlier. <laughs> but it was a very dramatic moment. That's true. I know, but I'm it just was. saying I didn't know I needed it until it was there, and then I'm like, we could have had it the whole time. <laughs> Maybe we should include it and some stories. That would be awesome. I think she might be publishing some short stories. Um, she said she recently had some really exciting news that wasn't Netflix related. So I'm thinking she's going to publish those short stories that she released. Oh, yeah. She's probably going to put in a little bind up. Authors do that a lot. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. 
Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we should wrap um, this up, maybe. Yes. yes. So live show date to be determined. We'll definitely post it on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Who's hosting the next one? Is it me or you? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I, I want to say it's you, Amber, but I'm sure. I mean, I think the default <laughs> yeah. is Amber because she nominated it, but we haven't, like, forced her. Yeah. I'll put it on think, the spreadsheet. Yeah, I think Stephanie's doing the one in June, from what yeah. I remember. And Stephanie's doing the unbroken. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Is, do we have a sheet for this? We should for sure have a sheet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Amber, I, I, one I forget that. I have that. <laughs> Apparently, I need to go do that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be the best. Best and for all you guys all know, when you May. see the live streams, it's all different. So don't <laughs> don't take us at our word. <laughs> Excellent. Cool. Well, thank you for watching. We'll be back. Well, Nikki might host some more reading sprints. Those were good last time. Um, otherwise, we'll be back in May. I, I just realized I do have animal companions. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's Simba, Simba and Nala. And Nala as yes. Well, that's cute. Uh, and now Lucy. Yeah. Speaking of, well. I've got little, like, Tsum <laughs> Tsums. Oh, I don't have yeah, anything. I've got, I've got, I've got like, all we all agree the best animal companian is to An this. animal companion. Pumbaa. I like how we He's all have an animal. Have a So small. You've so got so <laughs> oh. Okay, and with that, we'll end the